It is Wednesday, my dudes, which would normally mean it's time for a first thoughts, initial impressions, Epic 7 video. But instead, Smilegate did something really interesting this morning with Hellion Lua, who you see here on your screen. She was shown in the one minute update summary and her kit was shown actually over on stove, which we'll jump over to in just a second. I actually really like this idea here of showing the kit before the video gets published next week. So that way we, the community can kind of look at the character's kit, give feedback on it and then submit it over to Smilegate. And then, you know, the CMs and whatnot, they could see it, forward it to HQ and make any necessary adjustments. The reason why I like this change that they've decided to do is because once the video is published, it's kind of like, okay, the character's done. It's out of our hands. If it's BS, too broken, underpowered, nothing we can really do about it. It's already going to go out into the wild in like a week or so. Not enough time to do any due diligence or testing. Uh, it's just got to ship as is. And in a game where we can't nerf characters, if they make a mistake and the character is too busted, well, we're just stuck with it as a community. And that, as always, really, really sucks. So giving us an extra week to see the character's kit early. In fact, they didn't do, do us one better. Here's the character's concept art. They basically gave us the exact script uh, of the video. You can even see it says here, you know, the two-faced mastermind of Gone High School. Players will be able to meet Helly and Lua through the Mystic Summon starting November 7th. Thank you. That is literally how all of these, uh, you know, preview videos normally go. So they basically gave us the script of the video for this girl, Helly and Lua. And we're like, hey, you get to see it a whole week before the video. And again, my thoughts are this is probably to gauge community feedback because they're probably not 100% sure on the state of this character before it goes out the door. Uh, as for the character's design, first off, I think the Gyaru aesthetic, right? Like the girl aesthetic, the, uh, the JK, if you will, the high school girl, the Japanese like anime high school girl trope. I think it's a fine trope. Like there are obviously characters throughout fiction that, you know, pull this off pretty well. Junko Enoshima from Danganronpa, for example, comes to mind. As for the actual like color palette, I think there's way too damn much pink on this character. Not that I like hate pink, but it's pretty bad when you have a character with like pink hair with like purple accents and then she is wearing all pink with purple accents. That's a bit too much pink, right? This character probably would have benefited from having some kind of contrasting color uh, for her hair. I don't know. Blonde, for example, might have been probably a better pick for her, like blonde and blue with like the pink and like maybe blue uh, aesthetic. Or maybe you do like blonde and purple with like pink and purple. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. But um, I think that the character feels very one dimensional for her being all one color right like i probably would not have gone this overboard on pink like too much pink there is contrary to popular belief there is such a thing as too much pink i don't hate pink i think pink's actually a pretty good color but man there is definitely such a thing as too much pink anyways let's read uh what it says here despite her appearance as an ordinary high school girl lua controls everything at gone high school through her trusted subordinates while hiding her dark intentions Lua, a cute and charming high school girl, is almost always uh, is almost always be found. Okay, that kind of tripped me up. Is almost always found surrounded by company uh, due of her captivating and cheerful due to I assume you mean uh, her captivating and cheerful personality and her caring nature. Man, there's there's two type. Who wrote this sentence? <laughs> there's two typos in it. However, the persona she presents at school is nothing but a facade. In truth, she is the only daughter of the leader of the largest gang in Nada Prefecture, the Kumi clan. While she does uh, while she does win over Teyu, the final chess piece she needs for her schemes, her plans start to fall apart when Auden transfers to the same school to pursue him. Okay. So I guess there's a, an ML Auden sometime in the future, uh, if this lore is to be believed. Alright. So if you go down here to Battle Method, Hellion Lua is a 5-star Dark Elemental Ranger with high health, and can increase her effectiveness further through her imprint concentration. If you come back here to the YouTube video here, you can see that she is a Dark Ranger of the Pisces Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with the regular version of Lua, as well as Biblos, aka she's the tankiest ranger in the entire game. So you would expect the kit to leverage being the tankiest ranger 
in the entire game, right? So S1 is Lua attack, attacks the enemy and has a 100% chance to provoke for one turn. So just standard, this is what like most tanks or knights have usually. Uh, not something normally found on a ranger. Sure. Skill 2, Lua squad. After being attacked by a hero, increases the combat radius of all allies by up to 10%. And in this is statement here is written in bold, so it is uh, something you need to pay attention to. And makes all allies granted with challenge counterattack. Now, when I originally read this, I thought this was, it gives all allies something called a uh, challenge counterattack, like a counterattacking buff, kind of like a reverse Aria. Like Aria uses S3, gets a counterattacking stance buff. I thought this was the reverse of that. It was like, oh, I gave a specialized counterattack buff to everybody else. No, what this actually says is that when Lua is attacked by somebody, your whole team gets 10% combat readiness and makes any characters on your team that already have the challenge status use a basic attack skill as a counterattack. Got that distinction? I'll re-highlight it again after we talk about the S3 here which is Lua's challenge. Uh, grants challenge to all allies before increasing the defense of Lua for two turns. Decreases buff durations of all enemies by one turn and has a 100% chance to provoke for one turn. When 20 souls consumed, ignores effect resistance. Challenge is a unique status that says after counterattacking, when the target is a hero, so basically this only works in PvP, right? So after a character uses a counterattack while having the challenge status, it deals additional damage equivalent to 8% of the target's max health, dispelled after the effect activates, and increases the speed of the bearer for two turns. If you haven't figured it out, challenge is a very convoluted version of the debuff that uh, Lua used to use, Beguile. It's basically reverse Beguile. Instead of it being a debuff on your enemy's team and when they end, then they take damage and, you know, the move Sweet Talk that gives Beguile gives speed buff to your whole team. Instead, it's like, oh, if you attack me, you take the Beguile damage and then I get the speed buff, which obviously Sweet Talk is a way stronger move than Lewis Challenge. Now, the thing that sucks, like I, I had a glance here, right, is that this is a character that is designed entirely to punish your opponent with counterattacks, right? And obviously, because challenge is dispelled after one hit, to maximize the value on this, you want to counter with characters like Bellion that have an AoE attack, so that that way you get 8% max health damage to everybody when you counter off of the challenge. That would be super sick. The problems with this are pretty numerous, though. You have a character that is relying heavily on counterattacks. The patch after... You just buffed arguably the player base's favorite character, the great one, right? Mortelix. That character is probably going to see a lot of play. I mean, we don't know yet. The buffs don't go live until this patch this week. So Thursday, tomorrow, uh, the day after I record this video. But if Mort is even somewhat meta relevant, he just turns off this, in this character's entire kit. Like this character does nothing if Mort is in the match, right? So, yeah. And when I say nothing, I literally mean it. Like, whether you have it or your opponent has more, the character can't do actually anything. So that's pretty bad. Um, obviously, the character is going to be counter-based, which means that the usual suspects to counter it apply. Things like Rowana, Lionheart, Sermia, right? These things will all punish Lua pretty hard with her current kit as it reads. Um, on top of that... The other thing that's really rough about this thing is that Lua's challenge, right, decreases buff durations of all enemies by one turn, so it kind of gets past immunity. That's bog standard for a debuffer or like a mid-speed character uh, for here on out, right? And then has up to a 100% chance to provoke for one turn. All right, so let's say you have turn one with Heli and Lua, right? You press Lua's challenge, you get rid of all their immunities, great. Cool, you use Lua's challenge, you provoke everybody on the team, and then Lya procs Sweet Miracle, and then presses S2. And then your, your character does nothing. Because they're just obviously never going to attack Lua, because they don't want to give you a CR push. 
And, you know, because they're not provoked, they don't have a reason to. So they'll never proc challenge. Okay? And so the same thing applies for, like, Hangai as well, right? So Hangai zoops out with Warhorn. He does things where he grips his hand and, you know, blue lights flash. And then all of a sudden, boom, I have immunity. You can't provoke me. And then the character doesn't do anything. So I think you kind of are starting to see the problem here with this character. Um, this character kind of feels like a fairy tale Tenebria, only without a boatload of debuffs and defense breaks, right? Uh, my first thoughts on Heli and Lua are that she's not very good. I think this is the wrong time to release a character like this because we just had Harseti, so you can't reliably uh, expect this character to do anything um, or like take the first turn. And then we are going to be getting Mort, which completely shuts the character down. And then there are pre-existing characters in the meta like Rowana, Laia, Hangai, right? That just completely stop this character from doing the things that she is trying to do. Now, this is where I'm coming table back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the video. I like the fact that Smogate is showing us this character early because it gives some of us a chance to think about the character. Is the character good? Where would we use the character, right? What I'm talking about in this video, that might change two days from now. I might be like, oh, I missed this thing uh, after talking to other players that, uh, you know, I converse with like get other content creators and things like that. Like, oh, I missed this, right? Maybe the character is better than I think it is. And then it's no big deal, right? Or maybe you in the comment section below, let me know what did I miss on Heli and Lua? And I'm like, oh yeah, maybe this character is very good. But by giving us that extra week as a community to kind of like converse and talk about and not, you know, jump to some outlandish reaction within the first couple hours of this thing coming out and, you know, getting the character or like the buffs canceled like we've done in the past we sit we reflect upon it and for a couple of days and then we make our voices heard what we think about the state of the character and then maybe there's enough time for them to actually correct a couple of things like for example i think that 10 percent cr is a little bit too low on lewis squad maybe 15 would have been a bit better right maybe we try 15 instead and then this, obviously, the provoke for one turn, this really should have been a two-turn provoke at this point, I feel like, in the game. I think, like, two-turn provoke on paper sounds pretty debilitating because, well, it's a loss of turns for, you know, two turns. But if it's not two-turn provoke, there's just too many ways to get around it. Like, I, I don't know. Like, this is one of those ones where, again, you'd have to test it because, like, one feels like it does nothing. Two turns feels like it could be pretty backbreaking. Again. That's why you test things, right? You don't, I'm just a YouTuber. They don't have to take my opinion. You might think the two turn provoke is either broken or not good enough. But again, for, at a first glance, one turn does not feel like it's strong enough for this kind of character, especially, like I said, when things like Mort and Rowana just completely invalidate everything that this character is trying to do. And the character just feels like it'll have no game impact. Anyways, with the time remaining in the video, I want to highlight a couple of things. Obviously, Tomorrow, there's going to be all of the buffs, including the man that we just talked about, Mort himself, right? And then if you scroll over here in the video, Specimen says is getting a new exclusive equipment. People have lamented when I don't comment when a new exclusive equipment comes out. I'll throw it up here on the screen for you, but essentially, I believe it is attack percentage that he gets. And now when you use Lightstorm on characters that are stunned or characters that are asleep, they get the 100% defense penetration. Meaning that you can play your specimen says along death side death dealer right. That's super busted. I expect spez will be very, very good um, with this exclusive equipment because sleep is pretty prominent. Uh, pretty much at this point in the game's lifetime. Uh, again, death dealer Ray is a large reason for that, but he is such a big part of the meta. He is featured in a lot of games. So now having ambitious Tywin and death dealer Ray, probably like two of the top five most played characters. Uh, enabling him very easily. It seems like a no-brainer that if you were on the fence about building Spez, you probably should build him with this exclusive equipment because I do expect him to see some meta usage. We have Nature's uh, Decline and Decay coming up on Halloween, right? The Halloween patch will have this. This is Advent. For those of you who are new, this is very, very difficult 
content. It is designed for end game players. If you are newer, you still will be able to do a lot of the earlier floors pretty easily. You'll still be able to clear most of the shop, get most of the rewards. But if you want everything, it's going to be very difficult content. They always change one or two things. So uh, when these come out, so you can expect from me to actually do an updated guide for 2024 for nature's decline and decay. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. If you want to see that, uh, make sure you kind of ring the bell. You'll get a notification as soon as it drops. So my least favorite thing that was also shown in the patch today is the UI improvements. Yes, the UI needs improvements, but if you look here, the connecting animation will change, which means no more running Roz. No more Roz didn't skip leg day means like that has been a fixture of Epic seven for a long time. And if for whatever reason, Roz is no longer running. If like, it's not like an updated, better looking animation of Roz running. I say we riot because Roz not skipping leg day has just been such an integral part of E7 meme culture for so long that I would hate to see that go away. So um, we'll see how it goes. And then the last thing here I guess we'll talk about is the upcoming banners for you new players. Uh, so Crow and Mui are the two that are going to be on the banner. Just don't summon them. Uh, Crow is a relic of the past. Like He's not very good as a tank anymore. Yulha is just a better version of him. Mui is borderline worthless everywhere. Her artifact Circus Fantasia is... Uh, usable on like certain heroes uh abigail judge kise conquer Lois, but like otherwise nah like super not playable pretty much anywhere the only reason i could see you wanting to summon on this banner is if you need to max out holy sacrifice because that is a whale artifact if you were a whale with just oodles of money and tons of bookmarks by all means summon on crowd to get that holy sacrifice to level 30 Everyone else should just steer clear and hold on for any potential collabs or limiteds that we might be having in the future. Obviously, we're going to be going into November, right? That's like kind of the start of the holiday season, at least for us, us those of us here in America. Uh, it's the lead up to Christmas. There's almost always a Christmas limited banner. So you'll have like six weeks or so to start saving for that character to drop. So again, make sure you hold your resources. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. Let me know your thoughts on Hellion Lua down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.